The Christ is the Pattern for Every Man By Charles Thomas Casey Most of us are aware of the tremendous power of words, including names. Built into our minds and bodies are connections between names and mental and physical responses to those names. For example, I could probably call you a bad name that would produce a lot of responses in you including some internal automatic responses by your heart and adrenal glands. That same word might produce no response at all in someone else. It's a matter of how we have been conditioned. Many of us also have fairly automatic responses to certain spiritual and religious names, such as Jesus, Buddha, Christ, Christian, Jewish. Even though the Edgar Cayce readings use familiar names such as Jesus and Christ, at the same time they painted a picture of the nature of reality, God, and Spirit, that was much broader and more universal than some of our usual associations with those names. Questions have often been raised about the use and meaning of these words in the readings and in ARE programs and publications. Recent articles in Venture Inward have stimulated an increasing number of such questions, as seen in several letters to the editor in the March-April and May-June 1989 issues. The readings do caution about the potential confusion created by names. He that declares as a name, in a name, save in the universality of the Father, limits the ability of the seeker, and of the channel through which that glory may come to any. Learn, rather, that given, by what name shall I say that I am sent? I am that I am. That, rather than any name of this, that or the other manner. The I am that seeks may gain, then, that access to the I am that brought, brings, holds, the worlds in their place. At the same time, these names, as they are defined in the readings, are central to what many consider to be the philosophy of the readings. I think they suggest the following. Jesus, the historical figure of the Bible, was a person with a soul who had previous incarnations in the earth, as we have. These incarnations span the cultures and spiritual impulses of the world, beginning with an incarnation as Adam, or the first soul entering the earth plane. The readings provide rich details of this soul's experiences as Jesus. His life and teachings provide a pattern for a relationship with God that the readings suggest is worthy of study by us all. After his death, this Jesus has continued to be available as a spiritual being to many people. The readings suggest that many of these contacts with the spiritual being Jesus are real encounters, not wish fulfillment. Edgar Casey reported such encounters with this being, both in and out of the trance state. We have all heard stories about experiences with other non-physical beings, including relatives who have died, famous people, religious figures, and others. The readings confirm that this is possible but that such encounters and the building of a relationship with the non-physical entity who lived in the earth most recently as Jesus offer special opportunities for healing and spiritual attunement. The readings also suggest that souls may incarnate in broad groups relative to time and culture. Perhaps many of those interested in the Edgar Cayce readings and the special sensitivity that both Edgar Cayce and his readings seem to convey regarding Jesus have been associated with Jesus in his previous incarnations and past lives. In fact, this was the situation described for a number of those who had life reading from Mr. Cayce. The readings clearly distinguish between the historical figure Jesus, sometimes referred to as Christ, and the Christ consciousness. Certainly, some would feel more comfortable if the readings had used a broader term, like God consciousness, to refer to the universal pattern in all of us, but they didn't. This is partly due to the role Jesus played in confirming and demonstrating this pattern. In preparing to write a summary of the philosophy of the Edgar Cayce readings as an epilogue to his biography of Edgar Cayce, there is a river. Author Tom Segrew had several readings from Mr. Cayce trying to clarify terminology. In one of those readings he asked, Should the Christ consciousness be described as the awareness within each soul, imprinted in pattern on the mind and waiting to be awakened by the will of the soul's oneness with God? The reply was, Correct. That's the idea exactly. That is, in every soul, there is this pattern that is an aspect of the mind that can be awakened by our will. 
The readings indicate that the soul that first incarnated into the earth as Adam and finally as Jesus, provides us with a pattern of that awakened Christ consciousness. So, part of the job of working with the Edgar Cayce readings involves putting aside some of our previous associations with words and names like Jesus and Christ and considering the new perspectives on these words provided by the readings. For the Master, Jesus, even the Christ, is the pattern for every man in the earth, whether he be Gentile or Jew, Parthenian or Greek. For all have the pattern, whether they call on that name or not. But there is no other name given under heaven whereby men may be saved from themselves.